Learning Objectives After completing this module, learners will be able to understand and describe how industrialization gave rise to modern cities in England, understand and describe the problems of housing, cleanliness and transport in London, understand and analyze the social changes that took place in the cities, Understand and describe how large population could be a threat as well as an opportunity for political causes. Understand and describe process of urbanization in India. Understand and explain that urbanization always challenges the ecology and environment of a place. Characteristics of the city History stands testimonial to the fact that cities first developed along rivers. They could develop only when there was surplus food to support the non-food producers. Cities inhabited by various social groups such as artisans, merchants and priests became centres of political power, administrative network, trade and industry religious institutions and intellectual activity. Industrialization and the rise of the modern city in England Even decades after the Industrial Revolution, many Western nations had largely rural and migrant population. In late 1880s, the population of London reached 6 million from barely 1 million in 1810. London did not have many large factories with employment opportunities, yet it attracted a vast migrant population. Clothing and footwear, wood and furniture, metals and engineering, printing and stationery, surgical instruments, watches and objects of precious metal were important industries in London of the time. Number of factories increased in London only after the First World War. Marginal Groups As London expanded in size, so did crime in the city. The government was vigilant of the population of the criminals and imposed high penalties to discipline them. Jobs were also offered to the poor to prevent them from indulging in criminal activities. In mid-18th century, migrant women mostly worked as domestic servants. This profile changed in 20th century when more and more women got employed in wartime industries. The Compulsory Elementary Education Act in 1870 and the Factory Acts effective from 1902 prohibited children from joining industrial work. Housing After Industrial Revolution, a lot of migrant population moved into London for employment, but the factory owners did not provide accommodation to its workers. They lived in cheap and unsafe houses. The well-off citizens wanted these slums to be removed. These overcrowded, poorly ventilated houses were considered to be health and fire hazards. To prevent rebellion by workers, mass housing schemes were planned for them. Cleaning London Attempts were made to improve the landscape of the city by decongesting localities, building apartments and raising green patches. To avoid the pollution in congested cities, the affluent Londoners got holiday homes built in the countryside. Architect and planner Ebsener Howard developed the principle of the garden city. Raymond Unwin and Barry Parker designed the garden city of New Year's Week, taking cues from Howard's ideas. The city had common garden spaces and beautiful landscape. Unfortunately, only the rich could afford houses in this city. Meanwhile, suburbs had developed around London, making transport an absolute necessity. 
Transport in the city The London Underground Railway solved the crisis of transportation. The first section of the underground in the world opened on 10th January 1863 between Paddington and Farrington Street in London. It was constructed at the cost of destroying 900 houses and large-scale displacement of the poor. With the passage of time, the underground gained popularity. It helped in dispersing the population. As a result, meticulously planned suburbs came up. Efficient railway network helped people travel comfortably to work and live in the suburbs. Social Changes in the City Life in industrial city was gradually impacting the family lives. Families did not bond well and the institution of marriage was breaking down. While low-paid workers took care of the upper and middle class households, women in this social group faced loneliness. Working women in the lower middle class did have some control over their lives. Social reformers felt that women needed to be confined to homes alone to save crumbling family ties. Men, women and family in the city Male participation was dominant in political movements in the 19th century. Women who lost their industrial jobs were forced to stay at home. Women did step out of home much later to participate in political movements, demanding voting rights and a right to property. The urban families at this time were shrinking in size. Families were now being focused by the newly emerging market for goods and services. Leisure and Consumption the elite entertained themselves with opera, theatre and classical music performances. The government also established libraries, museums and art galleries to acquaint people with their achievements and history. The British industrial workers also spent time by the sea to benefit from the sun and breeze. Politics in the City in the bone-chilling winters of 1886 and 1887, the poor rose in rebellion demanding relief from abject poverty. In 1889, the London dock workers went on strike for 12 days at a stretch to earn recognition for their union. These events suggest that large masses could be mobilised for political causes. Hence, Large population could be a threat as well as an opportunity. The state authorities worked at improving the urban aesthetics to reduce occurrence of frequent rebellions. The city in colonial India India did not experience rapid urbanization under the colonial rule. The three presidency cities, Bombay, Bengal and Madras, inhabited most of the urban dwellers. Bombay, the most eminent of the three, expanded rapidly. From 6,44,405 in 1872, Bombay's population rose to 15 lakh in 1941, in the late 19th century. Bombay, the prime city of India. Bombay, an archipelago of seven islands, was under Portuguese rule in 17th century. A matrimonial alliance between Britain's King Charles II and a Portuguese princess in 1661 transferred the control of the islands into British hands. The East India Company took this opportunity to shift its base from Surat, its chief western port, to Bombay. Initially, Bombay was the major exit point for cotton textiles from Surat. Later, it became an important administrative centre in Western India. By the end of 19th century, it transformed into a major industrial centre. Work in the city 
Bombay became the capital of the Bombay Presidency in 1819. After the Marathas were defeated in the Anglo-Maratha War, traders, bankers, artisans, shopkeepers flocked to Bombay due to the flourishing cotton and opium trade. Cotton mills also attracted migrants in large numbers. Between 1881 and 1931, migrants comprised three-fourths of the population in Bombay. Women comprised 23% of the mill workforce between 1919 and 1926. Bombay had a commanding position in the maritime trade till the middle of the 20th century. Its strategic location at the head of two junctions facilitated migrant movement into the city. Housing and Neighbourhoods In the overcrowded city of Bombay, a person had barely 9.5 square yard space. The haphazard and unplanned growth of the city led to water and housing crisis in mid-1850s. The ever-increasing workforce of upcoming textile meals added to housing problems. While the European elite and rich Indian traders and industrialists live in sprawling mansions, 70% of the working class lived in dinghy chawls, which were multi-storey structures divided into small one-room sets. By renting out chawls, the owners earned quick money from the migrants. People of depressed or lower classes were denied entry into a chawl. The City of Bombay Improvement Trust, established in 1898, focused on clearing poorer homes from the city. The Rent Act of 1918, launched to control rents, aggravated the problems of housing as landlords stopped letting out the houses. Land Reclamation in Bombay The project to join the seven original islands of Bombay was initiated in 1784. William Hornby, the governor of Bombay, sanctioned construction of the Great Sea Wall, which reclaimed low-lying areas and extended the city by 400 acres. It also prevented floods in the low-lying areas. Scarcity of land for residences and commercial activities led to more reclamation projects coming up by the government and private agencies. By 1870s, through the efforts of various private companies, the city had expanded by 22 square miles. Reclamation project undertaken by the Bombay Port Trust successfully built a dry dock between 1914 and 1918. The excavated earth was used to create the 22-acre Ballard Estate. Later on, the picturesque marine drive was developed on the reclaimed land. Bombay as the city of dreams the world of cinema and culture. Despite enormous crowd and difficult living conditions, Bombay, India's film city, remains the city of dreams to many. A scene of wrestling match shot in Bombay's Hanging Gardens by Harichandra Sakharam Bhatwadekar in 1896 was India's first movie. Dada Saheb Phalke made Raja Harishchandra in 1913. By 1925, Bombay had acquired the status of the film city of India. The Bombay film industry had migrants from many cities like Lahore, Calcutta, Madras, etc. Many famous writers like Ismat Chuktai and Shadat Hassan Manto also contributed to the Hindi cinema. Bombay films have projected the city as a blend of dream and reality, slums and star bungalows. Cities and the Challenge of the Environment Development of cities always causes harm to the environment and ecology to make space for industries, houses and buildings. 
England faced similar problems due to smoke from factories. Derby, Leeds and Manchester had laws to control smoke in the city by 1840s. The laws did not help much, firstly, because measuring or monitoring smoke was not easy. Secondly, factory owners and steam engine owners were reluctant to invest in technologies that prevented incessant flow of smoke. The Smoke Abatement Act of 1847 and 1853 could not prevent smoke emission or clear the air. Calcutta is also known for air pollution. Since it is built on marshy land, the fog combines with smoke resulting in the black smog. Air pollution was also caused by the usage of dung and wood as fuel. But industries and establishments using steam engines run on coal contributed much more to air pollution. The British authorities wanted to clear the place of miasmas, harmful vapours, but another pollutant in the form of coal from Raniganj came into picture through the railway lines laid in 1855. High content of ash in Indian coal polluted air. In 1863, Calcutta became the first Indian city to bring about smoke nuisance legislation. The rice mills of Tolikanj used to burn rice, husk instead of coal, which emitted high levels of smoke. The inspectors of the Bengal Smoke Nuisance Commission controlled industrial smoke, but controlling domestic smoke remained difficult. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Number of factories increased in London only after the First World War. As London expanded in size, so did crime in the city. The Compulsory Elementary Education Act in 1870 and the Factory Acts effective from 1902 children prohibited children from joining industrial work. After Industrial Revolution, a lot of migrant population moved into London for employment. Attempts were made to improve the landscape of the city by decongesting localities building apartments and raising green patches. The London Underground Railway solved the crisis of transportation. Life in industrial city was gradually impacting the family lives. Family did not bond well and the institution of marriage was breaking down. India did not experience rapid urbanization under the colonial rule. By the end of the 19th century, Bombay had transformed into a major industrial centre. Bombay became the capital of the Bombay Presidency in 1819 after the Marathas were defeated in the Anglo-Maratha War. 70% of the working class in Bombay lived in dinghy chawls, which were multi-storied structures divided into small one-room sets. Reclamation projects undertaken by the Bombay Port Trust successfully built a dry dock between 1914 and 1918. The picturesque marine drives was developed on the reclaimed land. Despite enormous crowd and difficult living conditions, Bombay, India's film city remains the city of dreams to many. The Smoke Abatement Acts of 1847 and 1853 in London could not prevent smoke emission or clear the air.